when I was a kid, my uncle, so like my uncle was never like a selling artist or never went to art college, but he did lots of like oil, like surrealist oil paintings that were all over my house when I was growing up. And I really liked looking at them and kind of like trying to work out what he was meaning. Cause I always felt like he was saying something about the family. Like you could always see like one figure might be like his mom or like another figure might be his dad. And you'd kind of try and read the paintings in a way. And it was kind of like there was like some sort of like secret knowledge in them that I was always just really interested in. Or like I remember even like when I was making a portfolio in secondary school, I kind of wanted to do fashion. And then I was like designing clothes and stuff like for the portfolio. But then I got more into like drawing the people. I don't know. Yeah. Like I've been doing portraits. Like my practice has been basically all people or like figurative portraits since I was 16. I'd like, I'd just seen a few paintings, like my art teacher showed me like Francis Bacon and Lucian Freud and David Hockney. And I found Egon Chile myself. And then I, I kind of thought, oh, I'd, uh, I'd like to be a painter. Getting accepted into the Zurich Portrait Prize really changed my family's perception of what I do. I got asked to be in the documentary at that, at that ceremony. Like, so it was like my first big enough show or like something. And then the woman who was making the documentary asked me would I be in it. And then I remember watching watching myself on TV and just kind of being like really embarrassed. And I also like really embarrassed that my nan was like being like, I'm so proud of you when it was before it wasn't like that. Definitely up until that point, they were kind of like saying like, Sal, do you really think you should be doing this? Like they thought it was like being an idealist or like a dreamer by the idea of saying like, I'm going to be a painter. I definitely get a lot of people saying like, oh, you love yourself, sort of like always painting yourself or like, it's actually something I'm continuously always insecure about. Because when I started off, I didn't think that I was going to make so many self portraits. I kind of thought I was going to paint other people. And then I suppose like other people kind of got offended by the way I was painting them or like I actually felt like I was being a bit mean or something by trying to paint like maybe like a darker, sadder aspects. Since then, I've just tried to do it to myself rather than to other people. I don't want to project too much onto other people. It's very easy for me to be truthful about my own experience. To say that I could be truthful about someone else's experience is just maybe like a bit of an overreach or something. Also, I've always noticed that when people do self-portraits, they often flatter themselves quite heavily. So I always try and make sure that I don't do that. And maybe sometimes I go too much to the extreme and then maybe sometimes I do flatter myself. Um, but I do try, like, that is an interesting, you know I mean, trying to be honest about who you are is always like difficult or interesting and also like therapeutic. So just go like, where am I at? What am I like? It's kind of like a diary really as well. Like I do kind of, sometimes fantasize about the future and being able to look back at like essentially what would be like a painted diary of all like the most important events or like what I thought was the most important events that have gone on in my life, where you're at and how you felt. I always try and I do try and paint things that I think are important to me at a particular time. Like if I'm doing something the whole time, find a way to compose that into a picture. Uh, you know, like if I'm going to the pub too much, I'll do, like, I have a pub scene behind me uh, that I'm working on. And then, or, yeah, or if I was on TV, I thought I had to do something for that and uh, meet my dad for the first time, which is probably one of my more successful paintings because that was such a big event. So I was like, okay, I need to record this event as accurately as I can so that I'll always remember. With that painting of me and my dad, I just knew I wanted to try and paint a disconnect. I suppose like compositionally, I wanted to to make a, you know, in, like arrange it so that there was, so then I just did it by doing it on two different planes. It can be therapeutic, but also, I think, honestly, if I have like a strong emotion towards something or a strong feeling about something, it does make it easier you don't want to get it wrong, but at the same time, you'll know if you get it wrong. 
So I was always kind of like trying to like rep Lucan for one reason or another when I was in college. I was, it was like a running joke that any time I could like big up Lucan, I would. The reason for that, maybe if I analyze the past, was probably because I was constantly asked where I was from, especially because I didn't know my dad growing up and like my family or why. He was like, oh, but where are you from? And it was like, um, half Bangladeshi. Oh, have you been to Bangladesh? No, I haven't. I don't, I don't know my dad. And it was always like, just like a big kind of funny thing. I liked the uh, Psalter of Lucan because it's also like kind of grand and there's like Leonardo da Vinci and like taking your place name is a big thing with classical painters. And I actually decided to change my name while I was meeting my dad for the first time. It made me realize that like that was more accurate, that like I am just Salter from Lucan, that's, that's who I am. Maybe I could drop Salvatore and just be like Lucan or Lord Lucan, Lord Lucan 2.0 or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, don't, um, I don't know when we'll get to the stage where that is kind of normal. Maybe as immigration becomes a bigger thing, you're getting more people like, I suppose, more people even being like racist or something, maybe? I don't know if that's a thing. When I went to school, like, probably about maybe like 40 to 50% of the school would have been first generation immigrants. And there would have been maybe uh, three or four mixed race people in my year. It was multicultural in a sense, but it wasn't multicultural in the sense that there was like a big divide, like people hung around with their own, with their own race. I never really saw anything from the school's structure to kind of go like, oh, we're going to try and integrate. I don't know uh, if that's still the case in the school, but I do think in areas like that, there has to be like conscious effort to make sure that people don't like, we don't end up with like completely segregated communities. The fact that the collection is around, just knowing that like, no one's gonna like put it in the bin or an attic, like that it will be shown, you know, or like that it, it's there for people to see. And I also like that painting and I feel like that painting was a good representation of me. So I'm really happy that the Art Council bought it. I suppose most, a lot of artists have the same experience where like being on your own, as long as you could go to the studio, being on your own making work wasn't much different to what we usually do all the time. The only thing that probably was taken from me that I, I like doing is maybe the pub or going, you know, going to a dinner party or a house party. Um, obviously you miss them, but without those I got more work than I suppose as well.